Okay, this is the Brew EXT. This one's a 37 horse, fully hydraulic machine. We got the optional six-way wedge on it. It comes standard with the four-way wedge, which is right here. Very simple to change. He's already pulled the bolt out, so this wedge just pulls right off. Slide the other one right on. Put it back in. You got your measuring scale stick up here. Here's all your hydraulic controls. This is a good feature here. It's got the double detent valve. You pull both of them, you don't have to touch it again. It automatically returns when it gets to the end of the stroke. If you want to do it individually, you can pull one or the other back and forth. We can do that in the video, we'll show that. This is your saw on lever. Switch right here activates your oil pump. So when you pull this, sends the oil to your hydraulic drive motor on the bar. And if you hear that clicking, that's your oil pump running. So that's a test. This, this lever here is for your last block when you got like two blocks left in there and you bring it forward when she wants to tip. This just as a guide to hold it up until you clamp it. Just hold that up. As soon as you get it clamped, release it, it's out of your way. All right, this has a live deck on it. So you just load your deck. The chains automatically feed it forward when you pull a lever. These, these here are your anti-kick or anti-fall off bars. So if you got a guy loading, the log wants to roll back or something, or he hits the lever and brings the, the, all the logs back, you can straighten your logs up on it. So you bring them right back against these stops and these tip. So if you come in with a forklift, they'll, they'll lean right forward and then they kick back up by weight. Uh, oil tanks under here. This has an oversized oil tank because this runs everything hydraulic. You, you need that reservoir to keep the oil to right temperature. All of our processors, we put a pressure gauge on them. And we also put that on our H360 mill so we can test the hydraulic pressure because if you call me with a hydraulic issue, that's the first thing I'm gonna ask you is what's the pressure? To test the pressures, all you do is run one of your cylinders, I always use the splitter, bottom it out so you start here at squeal and bypass. Hold it there and see what your pressure reads here. You should be reading 2500, okay? If you're not reading 2500, something's going on. So you can check any of them, they should all be the same. All right, here's your ignition, throttle. The wedge adjustment on this machine is hydraulic too. So we can go down with the wedge. If it's running, it just pull it out and goes up. This is a feature we added, I think a couple years ago, is these kicker stars. And these help bring the log right over the top and throw it into your tray, which works great. He's here, grab the log when it gets there, boom, kicks it right over. This end goes on first, and you can run your chain, keep running your chain, and it still will kick it right on there, usually. Shouldn't have any issues. When you transport this machine, the deck folds right up, hook on it, and, and go after you put your pins in. There's a safety bar when you go for road transport. It's right up here in the front. There's a pin right here on this last deck bunk, and here's the bar. So that just swings up, locks on there for your road travel. It's all safety. This has a 16 gallon fuel tank on it. So you're not gonna be fueling up all the time. Like with the old ones, they had smaller fuel tanks. Easy to maintain your engine. Flip that up out of your way. And check your oil right here. Oil fill. Oil drain is right down here on the bottom like normal. You can check your hydraulic fluid right here. Checking your hydraulic fluid, when you pull that cap, you should be able to see the oil in the reservoir in that screen. That way you know you're at the proper hydraulic oil level. And if you get low on oil, it's not good for anything. <laughs> you can burn up your hydraulic pump and, and damage the whole system. Because if you get you burn up your pump, you're going to start pumping the shavings and stuff through your whole system, and it just ruins ruins it all. You got to bleed it all out. It's tough. Your bar oil reservoir is right over here. Again, like the said when the when you pull your saw on, it activates this oil pump to pump your oil up into. And here's your pump. 
here's your flow control on that so you can adjust the flow on the oil <coughs> for your bar lubrication. Another thing on our splitters I wanted to point out is in here there's holes slots cut in the back of the splitter. Especially on these because you get a lot of trash that falls down in. Clean this out if it builds up. And most of it falls through these holes that we put in that splitter and it doesn't affect the structure of the splitter one bit. The other thing you want to look at when, on all of our splitters is right up here in the tray. You can see there's some starting to build up in here. So if this gets built up, you split a lot of wood, the bark gets in there and the splitter comes ahead and it wedges in here. If that gets filled up into here, your splitter won't come ahead. Mm -hmm. it, it'll, it'll bottom out and then it'll want to detent back. So just keep an eye on that. There's legs on this machine, stabilizer legs all four corners. So when you, run it, you set it up, always put your legs down. This machine needs a support on it. That keeps it from bouncing around because it's a pretty tough machine. It's got the log clamp right here on the hydraulic cylinder. When that clamp comes down, it has to reach a certain pressure. I think it's 800 pounds. Don't hold me to it, but I think it's 800. When that clamp hits 800 pounds, then it triggers the cylinder for the saw bar to activate. So that saw bar won't come down until that log is clamped. That prevents you from damaging the bar and anything else. So if the log clamp is down and you hit the lever to feed that ahead and your bar is down, you ain't gonna, the log ain't gonna move, you know. So that's a safety feature too that we built right into them. Saves your bar and your brackets and all that, yes. Always make sure that your valves are on in your hydraulic pump feed. You see under here, there's two yellow levers. Remember both of your feeds for your pump. This has a, a double pump on it. So you've got 22 gallons a minute and you've got 11 gallons a minute coming out of this end. There's eight, 11 or eight on this, this side of the pump. And that runs all your chains. And if you're running the conveyor, it runs that conveyor. And you run your saw bar down and your clamp. Everything, the splitter runs only off of this and your saw. So our newest one we've come out with is a triple pump. So we've got two 22s on it and then the eight. So then you can cut and split at the same time. This one here you can only cut or split. So the owner's manual tube comes mounted on the front of this machine right here. Should have the owner's manual for the motor and the components that are up in the front for the valve. This, this knob here, what this does is adjust the speed of your bar and your clamp coming down. So in cold weather, the oil stick, things are gonna move slow. So if they need to speed it up, you loosen this bottom nut here, that's your jam nut, and you turn that knob to adjust your speed. And so you, you don't wanna adjust it while you're cutting, you wanna just run it down and up and check your speed. And then when you get into the wood, you may wanna slow it down a little bit more because it may stall your saw and then you might have to start feathering. You want it right to where you can just hold your lever on and just keep it going steady. You don't want to have to keep feathering it because that's eating up some of your time in cutting. If you just hit that wooden keeper going too nice, it, and you'll probably see me mess with it because it's still cold. We ran a little bit, got some heat in it, but once you get it up to full temperature, you're going to adjust this back to your full speed. Okay, you're going to close it down because your oil's thinner, it's moving a little easier and a little bit faster. When it's thick like that, it's like molasses pouring over a pile of stone or something. It's going to move a little slower. Just think of it like that. <laughs> okay, this machine is the fuel injected, so there's no choke up here. The other ones, if you get the 35 or any lower, lesser, well, you ain't going to get much less than that. You get about 23, but you're going to have a choke lever right here in this other hole. So if you go to start it, you pull your choke, but this one you don't have to. So throttle is the same as all our other ones. Twist it, bring it up to speed all the way up again i can hear the difference elevation so we're going to go deck forward boom i'll show you how that can straighten that log up we can run that right back against some other backstop straighten our log up so it works pretty good we're off a little bit here and just push her in. Now I'm going to come forward, feed, 
forward and you can feed backwards. So if you get a jam, you're in or out either way. Make sure when you're coming through initially that the butt of the log will always clear your hip, your, your cage here. We call this the dog house because it looks like a dog house. So if you hear that term, that's what it is. So we're ready to cut. Saw up, saw down is your last lever. One thing I like to point out is for your deck up and down, we don't have a wrench here, but I like to take this lever out and you can screw them down in the side here, front or back, and then you never hit that when you're running it to raise your deck or you don't make that mistake. I get the saw down, you see that clamp coming down? Putting pressure as soon as it hits that 800 mark, the saw is gonna start to move. We're probably about the right speed. Perfect speed right there. Make sure you always bring your saw up. Split. We'll bring your forward again. You're already ready for your next cut. Clamp, saw. Mike, you want to start that conveyor? Oh, he's got it. Now see that's kicking out a little bit because our oil's cold. So I can, you can pull the one lever and now we're splitting. Boom. This one will lock it back. So again, we can go forward manually if we want, stop anywhere as we want, and we can reverse it with that one. You want to lock in reverse, just pull that when it locks in defense. So I'll forward, or forward again, out to your stick, clamp down. Sometimes that detent will kick out prematurely until it gets warmed up. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I, I know. Again, we got that V-tray shaped trough, and this machine works great for recentering. Well, that saw is set for the perfect speed, and you can see that since I started sawing, it's picked up a little speed going through the wood. Plus, we're also getting a little bit smaller, but. The detent, I just remembered, is because we got a six-way wedge on it and not the four. So that's why it's taking a little more pressure to push it through. Here's where I'm gonna use this foot thing to hold up the wood as it comes forward. Put a little pressure on it. I'll leave my long side inside. Clamp. Release. I want to show you something here so everybody catches it. So when that splitter's going in reverse, well, it's let up defense. The saw won't come on. Okay? When that's back and you hear that, boom, now you're back. Because you only got the one. 22 gallon a minute pump. You put that double on there, you can do both at the same time. While that's going back, you can start your next cut. Once you get used to these levers, it goes pretty fast. You can see just that one log went through there. These pieces of bark just falling in the back. The small pieces go out them holes, so these are the size that won't fall, fall too. Yeah. Okay, anybody got any questions on the brute EXT? What's the benefit of the double lever system on the uh, wedge? The, the detent, double detent, you don't have to hold it. Pardon? Okay. That's, that's so you lock it in and it stays. And like I said, I forgot that we got the six-way on there, so this was set up for the four-way. So you got the six-way on there, you're putting, taking more force to shove it through. 
So that's why if you're going to change to the six way, you want to adjust your detent. Got it? Good question, Aaron.